Disney, in an 80 plus year history, he created stories and characters that touched all of us. And when you create that much, some of it isn't quite gonna work out. This is 80 years of history sort of together in one piece for the first time that players can interact with. There's a lot of stuff there. There's enough there for 100 games. I wanted to just honor that rich creative history and remind people not just about the things that they remember, but all that stuff that they've forgotten. Getting the opportunity to, to visit you know, the Disney archives and just look at how much information has been stored over these past 80 years is mind-blowing. You, know, you get to see these old pre-production drawings from Fantasia or what Pinocchio was going to look like, or Captain Hook in blue, really? Tons of cool stuff to see. Now, as a fan of Disney animation, this was a great opportunity for us to go back, relive a lot of the, the characters that I loved as a child, and then reintroduce them for today's market. And some of the stuff is so cool, we don't know why it ended up in an archive and didn't make it to screen or to print. So we were really excited to be able to grab some of those things, pull them out, and give them new life. The problem wasn't what to put in, the problem was what to put out, because Disney's history is so rich and there are so many characters and places to, to choose from. Uh, the weeding out process was a nightmare. The whole story around Disney Epic Mickey is about remembering these forgotten characters. And not only is Mickey doing that, but the player is doing that as well. And so their role kind of became this unique and interesting part of the story in the game, because as you, the player, go through, you're learning about characters that you may have never seen before in the Disney archives. And now you're remembering them as well as allowing Mickey to remember them. In Oswald's case, we had to remind people what his personality was like, what his abilities were, uh, what made him one of the most popular stars in, in the late 20s. For some of the other guys, you know, it was really, they're kind of foils for Mickey. They're ways to remind Mickey that even he's forgotten his old friends. We've got a character who himself has forgotten characters like Clarabelle Cow and Horace Horse Collar and the Mad Doctor and uh, Gus the Gremlin. Those are characters that, that you know, in some cases he interacted with a bunch in his early cartoons, and so we get to have him play the role of the, the player so we can show kind of the sadness of the, the characters who have been forgotten by Mickey and, and by the player and use them to evoke some emotions in the, the player that uh, I think will enrich the experience. We really tried to be as true as we could to the reality of these characters as the Disney animators and as Disney himself created them. One of the first rules I set up for the team was if something from the Disney universe, that, that creative history, works for us, then we're going to use it. We're not going to create or change it. As we went through the archives and looked at the different characters, we saw all that charm, uh, all of that character, all of that personality that really has been forgotten. And that, that was a kind of big decision point in pulling those characters back into the game so people can remember them and enjoy them again. This team really embraced the challenge of immersing themselves in Disney's history. Disney Epic Mickey is, in a really strange sense, a history lesson. I hope nobody perceives it that way. I don't want people put off by that. But at the end of the day, players are going to learn something about Disney's creative past. Disney fans in particular, I think, are going to have a great time playing the, the where did that come from game. Because almost everything in the game is inspired by something real.